Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Ghost in the Magazine. I'm Steph. And I'm Elle. And I'm Elle. And we're doing another early release movie. This one is called Emmanuel's Revenge, and it's a sexy Italian thriller. Highlight sexy, because obviously that's what they want. We were going through the stills looking for Zoom backgrounds, and you have stuff like this. Sexy Jesus. Dare Gelato. I sold that for Mal. <laughs> That's what he is. He's, he, he's the buff Italian cousin of Jared Jared Leto. Yeah, we watched the trailer. I I wasn't really sure what to expect. There was a lot going on, and and we're we're doing spoilers. We're gonna talk about all the things. There are two main things that I noted. First of all, and. I dressed extra, you know, sweet and feminine to say this. Chekhov's butt plugs. <laughs> when you said that to me last night, I laughed so hard because, yes. <laughs> I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, damn. I Why are that. you going to show me a whole shelf of butt plugs in a butt plug dungeon if you're not going to butt plug anyone? Especially <laughs> someone who really deserved it. I was going to say, he really deserved to be butt plugged disrespectfully he probably would have liked it though so like i he was into that kind of shit he was that's the only reason he could get caught the way he was was because he was a little bit of a freak which i'm not kink shaming but this guy's a dick well yeah he's a dick um but i think i don't know there's i think there there was like a, a fine line between like what he actually liked and what he would do to get just what he wanted because every woman was a thing to like conquer you know what I mean I also feel like he wildly underestimates women which makes me extra happy I was just very satisfied with the direction of this movie because this man gave me anxiety from jump yeah that is something that I noticed too like and this type of guy like the man bun I'm gonna fall for that shit except for he's a rich bitch so I'm immediately going to hate him a little bit because I'm not a class trader and they talked about crypto a lot which it felt like they were trying to like legitimize the cryptocurrency thing which not doing so well so I don't know when you shot this but oh and it's a movie that hasn't come out yet um maybe mm -hmm. it's different in other countries maybe well because i mean they definitely don't wear bras over there nobody was wearing. i bras. love it i, I like, love it what this this is sound this is excellent it's like done yeah i'm into it i mean hey. the other thing i learned about from this movie you know and this was education you know because i'm a stupid american i this is fancy italian cinema you know and mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time this summer trying to flirt with a guy by, like, explaining all of the weird shit that I think about, like the pickle man and uh, shit like that, you know? I could have just taken my underwear off and given it to him. What Men the are fuck? easy. I Sorry. Just, like, I don't know how to flirt. I just got to wear a dress, take no. my underpants off, and hand it over. Just, <laughs> there you go. Girl, stop. Girl, stop. <laughs> The kind of man you want is not the kind of man who's going to be impressed by something like that. I mean, if it's you, sure, but if it's some random bitch, he's going to be like, ew, what the fuck are you giving me your panties for? I don't know you or your coochie. Like, <laughs> it's I mean, unfamiliar. I don't, I don't know. They have used underwear vending machines in Japan. Yes, for a specific man. You know what I mean? But they're everywhere. So let's yes. men are everywhere. So right. Maybe. The ones we want no. are not those. No. <laughs> and that's okay. I don't know that um, I want any man, but... Well, certainly not this one. This guy is literally an animal. He's not a human in my mind. Um, I was very afraid of him. Because mm -hmm. so exactly what you said, I was on red alert because man bun 
a sexy Jesus, and he, he, you know, he's in that world, but he's also like a little scruffy. He's like, you know, he seems like an approachable piece of shit, not like an unattainable piece of shit. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, he, it feels like he could easily like lie and stare you down from across the bar and like what are you gonna do (laughs) like what the fuck are you gonna do so I really appreciate in the beginning his it's really gross he because he sees women who are a challenge like grade a prime meat and it like makes him salivate and he's like, I'm not going to stop until I get that. But it's not a romantic pursuit, as you find out. It's literally just like a trophy for him. But I appreciate greatly how strong the female characters are in this movie. Because Francesca says no a lot. It's not just conquest. It's like humiliation. He yes. wants her to know that she's less than him and it's like a domination thing and it's revolting and i Mm -hmm. i've got to say like my ick alarm was going off in the at the get and like i said it shouldn't be because i should be attracted to someone that looks like that but mm, no it amps up that thing where we're like oh we can't trust men when we should be able to like we should be able to at least be not on red alert all the time especially if a handsome guy that we're interested in and is you know at least acting like he's interested in us like we shouldn't have to be on red alert all the time you know and she had a past already of that shit happening which sucks and he had to have known it somehow i'm guessing because why else would it doesn't seem like exhibition is his big thing because he doesn't no, seem like, to no. want to do it with Emmanuel later on or like it doesn't seem like there's a history of it. It seems like he found out this girl's specific history and tormented her, yeah. which is psychotic. One thing that I got from him, he kept saying, I'm not like them. I'm not like yeah. other men. I'm not like them. He's damn right. He sure. That was He's true, grosser. But- yes in like a violent sense like maybe you've never met anybody like me i will literally tear you down to Mm. your worst nightmare oh my god and the andrew tate-esque rhetoric (laughs) well and that's what i was about to say is it's one of those like when like 50 shades of gray was like coming out and becoming a thing watching people do like analysis videos of like how like his actions were almost similar to a cult leader's he was this this dude was hitting those same like stair step things of like tearing you down love bombing tearing you down and that's like an initiation to start to get people to come into cults and so it's very much felt like he was trying to be like the italian like revenge version of 50 shades of gray with it it was the same thing with like it didn't have the contract but it had a very similar vibes and i was like watching i was like oh he has cult leader vibes which is another reason i was like oh he's giving jared (laughs) well he also i mean like he had he had a cult he had friends and followers who knew that who know he's like this and the women will still sleep with him and the men are still close with him yeah so he is that guy it's icky so you don't know right away what happens to francesca um it skips to a year later and and, um yo you find out he's fucking married he's got a kid you don't know any of that stuff in the beginning and i was very confused when they started throwing that shit out there and Mm -hmm. i'm like what because i thought his daughter was like you know (laughs) another girl he was trying to bang yeah and then Emmanuel comes into play. She very harshly inserts herself into this man's uh life. And uh first of all, love that she's a lesbian, um, or bisexual, whatever, but she has a female partner and she's very much like, you know, uh she catches his attention purposely, but then she shoves him off. She's like, I'm sorry, like I'm with someone and like her girlfriend's out there. And he's crazy. He stalks her. 
he mm-hmm. follows her if she but i get, she must know that he's gonna do that but like yeah. that's so icky to me i was so every time he would pop up i was like ew ew is this man serious ew well i'm guessing that emmanuel is who francesca was like on the phone with earlier oh, yeah uh when so she probably knows that he's like pushing hard up on Francesca early on mm-hmm, and she's like warning her yeah and it's like this is bad behavior and so she knows exactly what he's like so she, it was like perfect in because he mm-hmm. didn't know she existed so yeah. one thing I will say is if you're gonna give me a terrible story about a terrible man just like terrible people doing terrible things give me the revenge at the end which she did and mm-hmm. she executed that shit perfectly i felt bad for her girlfriend though uh getting like dragged through it because she had no idea what was going on no. and like, you can tell when your partner is being sketchy and and respectfully like everybody can have their boundaries and stuff about like partner sleeping over and whatever It's a red flag to me if you don't want me to stay over after it's been a while and we've established trust and things like that and you're keeping this like one thing like a secret. Not that she's a bad guy. It's revenge. But it's like a big, terrible, scary thing that your your partner is involved in and doing. But I support I also had to like support that though because she is an author with a deadline and when you have deadlines happening you nothing the family things get canceled like you're just done so I was like yeah okay I I can see where she's coming from yeah but she was doing that before the deadline I respect it I do Mm -hmm. I support it but it's like you know it's a thing so I do feel bad for her partner and then there's another thing that I don't really like (laughs) about her revenge i didn't think that she needed to get the daughter involved like that i would have preferred if she fucked the daughter and made the dad watch that's hilarious but Mm -hmm. it 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 went a little left for for me same i do appreciate that she more like left it to his imagination knowing he's a terrible person and he would assume that terrible things happen to the daughter behind that picture frame despite the fact that she let her go uh Mm -hmm. but that was still traumatic and she didn't need to put her through that either i will say that they built a very terrifying he was a very terrifying character um he was also very corny the blue roses to symbolize a wish to achieve the impossible like come on you know what i thought of when i saw blue roses animal crossing oh because yeah well because you can plant flowers in a specific like like coordination to get different colors and blue Mm. roses are rare and I was just looking it up on reddit the other day and when he popped that out and I was like bitch are you for real his aggression is definitely terrifying like it it popped off the screen of like anytime that he like got too close to Francesca it was just kind of like an uncomfortable like I didn't like any of it like the way he like aggressively pop kissed her every time he like touched her I like recoiled because mm-hmm. I'm like there's just something really nasty inside of this man and I can't and he it's had a wife a this whole time mm-hmm. that's extra gross I will say it did a really good job of like subverting expectations it's like starting off with Francesca after everything happened and then going back to like introducing who she was and then you getting like 30 minutes into the story and now we have a whole new cast of characters and it's like oh you have the daughter who we think is going to be another love interest and so it did a really good job of like keeping the thriller aspect there because a lot of times you get into that like the psychosexual side of things it ends up being just like oh it's all just going to be long you know shots of Mm -hmm. psychosexual stuff but they did a really good job of like remembering that the thriller aspect was part of the story so i did appreciate that because it didn't keep me guessing of like oh what's gonna happen next and uh, oh what is she gonna open up behind this door and oh who is she calling on the phone and stuff mm-hmm. like that right. so because it could have easily dissolved into softcore porn yeah the one thing that i will say is it did really good job at like cutting away so nothing was like very awkward it was very artsy it was giving me knife plus heart because mm-hmm. that one had like you know some less than comfortable aspects but nothing was like in your face gratuitous it all yeah. felt 
you know, kind of lovely, even though bad things are happening. So this was kind of like, I don't know if that's like speaks to, to foreign thrillers over American thrillers. Cause that one was French. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I thought of was the other Italian movie that we covered. Ultimate? Um, yeah. And, and just the fact that there is that revenge element, like they don't leave you hanging. We're like a lot of these stories that that we see in like american cinema they, mm-hmm. their ending is very cynical typically and i thought i found that this one and that other one as weird as they got they yeah. were at least there was a sense of justice in them that isn't always in a lot of the films that we watch so i don't know if that's a cultural thing or if it's just these two films or what it is but I appreciate it it makes it a little easier to watch uh, especially when it's something that you know I'm not really like a a horny movie type of gal so me either but like so good like like Waseda the Bone Woman when Mm -hmm. uh, with that um intimate scene and even like between the two women and one of them was pregnant which could be taboo I feel like they're like just enough to make you like not hate it <laughs> like, mm-hmm. so you're like okay this is good um this is fine so it was a very cinematic and like the cinematography mm-hmm. and it was so artistic and beautiful and the music was great too like the, mm-hmm. the music yeah. cues and timing were excellent too so it was it was a, a definitely a very artsy attempt on watching something compared to like something like you know was it nymphomaniac which is just like too long movies of like (laughs) long long porn that's trying to be artistic like this one actually achieved it and Mm -hmm. was you know entertaining enough to watch without too much secondhand embarrassment yeah yeah because i get i get cringy and awkward if i see too much because i'm like i didn't i didn't like i wasn't looking to watch pornography right now like that's not what i'm (laughs) looking for at freaking 10 o'clock in the morning you know what i mean so I yeah I enjoyed it I enjoyed it I really really like that even before she tied him up in her awesome secret room because she's awesome um she did not let him have her like he could not get her at all mm-hmm. and I loved it it's fuck you and then she made him watch her have sex with her her girlfriend like, I'm gay I think the other thing I like about it too is that she was so intelligent about everything and you could tell mm-hmm. that she was definitely the one in control because normally i don't think he would have just like sit and submitted and let him get self get tied up but she had him so wrapped around her finger and she was so smart about everything mm-hmm. and but still like had that like feminine like aspect to her that she didn't start to feel like you know i'm gonna turn into captain marvel and just like beat the crap out of this dude i'm gonna use it his weaknesses too, his my advantage and just... it was all fun and games for him so she got that ball gag out and he was like oh right. that oh, was man, the best know. look he had all movie yeah because he jerked back like i i what's happening <laughs> he still opened his mouth but it was over for him at that point but... mm-hmm. didn't have to listen to him say fucking horrible shit anymore so no, cause shut shut up. Honestly, I thought Michael had more involvement just because his name was was Michael, um, and like when he, I don't know what the purpose was, but when he was like having sex with that girl and they showed like the bondage moment and you know he was doing stuff and that lady was like, oh, you're not, you're not Leonardo, and that look he gave, I was like, oh, Michael did it, but he didn't. <laughs> he was a little like underutilized for how often he popped up in scenes i felt i agree mm-hmm. yeah i agree he was just sketchy with the money i guess like i couldn't figure out what they did like what the business was like why they were in yeah. Budapest. <laughs> like... i don't know i don't know but there were french people involved and in, in cryptocurrency mm-hmm. right. <laughs> again the crypto stuff i don't know if they were i just feel like that might date it later on for sure, but like, 
<laughs> well, but you also have to think about like when they were like when Francesca was like walking through the city streets and stuff. Like there were people like wearing like almost everywhere was wearing COVID masks because there was a lot of films that were like shot during lockdown when things were emptier and they had access to op- more open spaces and Airbnbs because nothing was happening. So I wonder if that was that kind of shot during that period because the crypto was pretty. <laughs> yeah that that's really cool yeah. that's a good assessment like i was just wondering if maybe like crypto.com or something paid them honestly then <laughs> as a I mean, product maybe. placement maybe because the girlfriend was like a cryptocurrency lawyer or whatever it was yeah. a lot it seemed really heavy-handed in it and i was just like every time i heard it <laughs> <laughs> Crypto. I guess you're, like trying to do something more like you know 2020s like money laundering type of thing that would be the most logical next mm. oh, that's true. in technology it's it's interesting to see those types of things it's like how you have you know like the second knives out movie everyone was wearing covid masks and people are talking about crypto in movies and it's weird to see those things get caught up to the events of the last couple of years. Yeah. Looking back, like, in the future, th- I mean, there's going to be tons of movies, like, that came out during COVID or whatever that mentions COVID that's going to be like this. Mm-hmm. It, I don't think it really detracts from the movie. It's just a thing. It's definitely a, a point to know. Let's chud it. I would say it rides the two and a half, three chud line for me. It's a solid movie. Would I watch it again? Probably not. Would I watch something that these filmmakers make again? Sure. I would. I'm going to say two and a half chuds also um, for the same reasons. I was not mad. Well, I was mad going through this, but not because of like the movie was terrible. I was mad at this fucking guy Mm -hmm. Um, because he scared me in a way I don't like to be scared at all. So... Two and a half chugs. I, I'll give it two and a half chugs. Again, I, really, I loved the music. I loved the the lighting and the cinema side of it. But I just got way too much secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> super, super uncomfortable. Like anytime, it, when it started getting to the point where he was like in the room, I'm like, oh, okay, we're just going to like up this up to 1.5 speed because I can't sit here and watch him dangle naked from home. Oh, I watched the <laughs> shit out of that. I just was happy that, um, you know, he was stuck in there and not out ruining women's lives so like yeah. keep him in the fucking room i don't i don't care what happens to him i don't yeah. care that his booty cheeks are out a lot of boobs and booty cheeks no one was wearing yep. no one was wearing bras <laughs> lingerie is optional yeah because when he gave her that lingerie it was literally just underwear it was <laughs> the lingerie was not even under it was a strap it's like <laughs> oh my god what the fuck rich people are weird you know g-strings I definitely don't have any of those in my underwear or they don't cover anything you you give me one of those and i wear it for any period of time like i'm just gonna want to fight you it's gonna yeah. make me mad i i don't want to have a sexy. wedgie all the time brother like that's, that's not sexy to me <laughs> it feels like it's the underwear version of this yeah they also don't have air conditioning over in Europe, so maybe it's hot. <laughs> maybe that's no. Hot. Oh, that would be so much worse. And you're like sweaty butt crack with the fucking strap up your ass. Like, no, brother. This no. Like and then I, I don't know about anyone else, but for big boobies and no bra and no air conditioner, like that yeah. sounds like a recipe for a bad time. No, she still looks good. Mm hmm everyone looked good it was everyone very attractive there's just a bunch of pretty people yeah except michael i'm just saying (laughs) we're prejudiced against michael's it's okay sure it's really true that's michael's anyway yeah great movie in the meantime you can find this podcast on the interwebs at ghosts in the magazine dot site you can find it on twitter at gitm podcast you could find me on twitter at witch x pudding you can find me at nocturnical Kitty! You can find me at Baby Mockingbird. <laughs> okay, bye! Bye, Kitty!